can scramble out of the bottom three at least for 48 hours. The result and the points are everything for two of the Premier League's most popular managers, Lenny Lawrence, the great escapologist, of course, and Joe Royal. Well, Middlesbrough have lost eight of their last ten games. They got a good point, though, at Blackburn on Saturday. They're still without first-choice keeper Steve Pears and key defender Alan Kernahan. Right-back Chris Morris was injured at Blackburn on Saturday. But Curtis Fleming, who's been out with a knee injury, comes in and fits nicely into the right-back position. Otherwise, the same side who got a draw at Ewood Park. Well, many Middlesbrough supporters I've talked to wanted Lenny Lawrence to play two front men tonight. He's answered their prayers there by pairing John Henry and Wilkinson up front. It looks a little bit unbalanced, but he's looking for Robbie Musto, the number eight there, to provide the width on the right side. Andy Peak to hold in front of the two centre-backs and Falkner and Wright to join the attack as often as possible. Well, Oldham had a 25-hour period off the bottom at the weekend until Forest Point yesterday, but they're back in last place now. They failed to keep a single clean sheet on their Premier League travels. They've been troubled by injuries all season, to be fair. The latest casualties, Ian Marshall, he's out for a month, and Mark Brennan, both hurt uh, against Queen's Park Rangers on Saturday. Andy Ritchie, interestingly, is back up front. He's had rare opportunities, and Paul Bernard will slip into the midfield. Well, Joe Royal recently has tried playing five in midfield, but I think with the inclusion of Andy Ritchie, that looks a more attacking formation there, with Ritchie and Olney up front. The only difference from that is either Henry or Bernard will play wide on the left. Don't be surprised if number 11 Bernard plays in the middle, and number four, Nick Henry, plays wide left. And with victory essential for Middlesbrough tonight, and Paul Wilkinson with only one league goal in his last nine league games, really must rediscover his goal-scoring touch. And with Oldham looking for their first clean sheet away from home in the league, and how Richard Jobson goes about his job against them will be vital. Tonight's referee is Kelvin Morton, and he has a very big appointment coming up at Wembley, the Sheffield Derby, that you'll see live on Sky Sports. He says he's really looking forward to that. And, of course, a key game for him tonight as well. And a lovely touch before this game, you know, in the tunnel. I'm told that all the players shook hands with each other, and with all the pressure and tension on them, that really is a very nice touch. We're away here. A key match, this at the bottom, and it's a bit of a cliche about six pointers, but Andy, this really is one. <laughs> if ever a game can be called that, Ian, then we've got one tonight. Here's Curtis Fleming, who's come back into the side after missing the last five games with a knee injury. Just as well for Lenny Lawrence that he was fit with Morris out. Poynton getting this one forward and offside in the middle against Ian Olney. Middlesbrough, remember, are two points ahead of Oldham at the start of play, but Oldham do have a game in hand, and both sides have more games to play at home than away on the run-in. Wilkinson going up for this one. He's bound to be a threat to Oldham tonight. Away by White for Middlesbrough, knocked on by Falconer. Robbie Musto trying to find Hendry, who's being deployed tonight in a far more central role. And for a moment there, Paul Gerrard losing the ball, and uh, a bit of argy-bargy for Calvin Martin to, uh, Morton to sort out already, Andy. Yeah, but stupid from Paul Gerrard, though. I mean, actually trying to clip little John Henry in the back of the head. You don't do that in the penalty area. The referee takes the wrong view of that, and you can be giving the penalty away. A little John, I mean, this is what you expect early on. This is a big match for everyone. He gets a little reckless with his shoulder charge, but it's a little bit needless what goes on after that. But just looking quickly in at uh, Oldham's formation, they have tampered with it a little bit. They've actually gone three narrow in the midfield area, the central midfield area, with Henry Milligan and Neil Adams just playing in the little hole between the midfield three and the front two. So he's changed it a little bit, Joe Royal, once again. Middlesbrough trying to come forward. Wilkinson can't control it. Jobson with the important interception. And Olney's pass is not nearly uh, accurate enough for Adams. It's quite a good opportunity there, too, for Oldham to counter. Fleming getting this one forward. Here's Musto, blonde-haired figure. Now Peake, who's been in a few scrapes at the bottom with Lenny Lawrence in his time at Charlton. Andy Ritchie knocking this one on towards Olney. Ritchie just playing behind Olney at the moment. And Ritchie, who's had uh, very little match practice, only his sixth start this season. He's 
been struggling to shake off the effects of back surgery. That'll be a free kick. They've almost gone man for man in midfield. Oldham with Bernard against Faulkner, Milligan and Peak, and Henry and Musto. Looks like uh, Peak is going to be the one who takes this free kick, although Fleming's there as well. Peak takes it in the end, not a very good one at all. And he had Big Wilkinson waiting for some service as well in the middle. Musto trying to pick up Henry's run. Once again, easy for Fleming in that Oldham defence. Here's Olney, good little flick on to Adams, and Adams has been in great goal-scoring form for Oldham lately. He scored four uh, of their last five goals. Well, that's that little position he's in tonight, Neil Adams, just behind the front two, and looking to get through and get past them every time. This really is quite an attacking formation that Joe Royal has sent out at the beginning of the game. Poynton. Long aim towards only just a wee bit too long for him. Still could be something for Oldham though. Gunnar Haller getting this in, and Bernard couldn't direct it anywhere near the target as you uh, saw. That was an awkward one for Bernard to deal with, but the ball from Gunnar Haller really wasn't good enough. A great opportunity to put a really threatening ball in there, but just his, his cross into the box not good enough at all. Gunnar one of six Norwegian internationals now playing in the Premier League. It's a, a growing club. It's not only Christmas trees they give us these days. Paul Wilkinson, sure to be a vital figure, top scorer again for Middlesbrough this year. And certainly Lenny Lawrence could do with a nice flow of goals from him on the run-in. This is the Oldham skipper, Mike Milligan. Oldham's free kick. Here's Haller. Nice touch let him down, but Falcon has given it back for Oldham. Forward by Fleming, and Richie is onside there. But he won't catch it. And a difficult time for Andy Richie. He hasn't scored a goal since March the 14th last year, but uh, having said that, he's hardly played. His experience will be vital, and uh, this will be some night if Oldham could rediscover his goal, golden touch. Well, I think having lost the experience of Graham Sharp, it is vital that someone like Andy Ritchie get out. He's got himself back fit and ready and available for Oldham in the running. The man's touch not too good. Johnson, and eventually Oldham, who can play some quite neat football at times, and they will try to football their way out of trouble because it's in their nature. But it's been uh, the defence that's let them down. 58 goals conceded, and by New Middlesbrough have conceded 57, Andy. What odds in a no-score tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Don't mention it. <laughs> Pointing. Adams knocking this down. Milligan forward, offside. certainly doesn't look as if they're trying to curb any adventurism in this Oldham side. You see Neil Poynton trying to get through and join the attack there. Last time we saw him, of course, he was being taken yeah. away on a stretcher at Sheffield United after that tackle from Brian Dean. Happily, it didn't work out too seriously, and here he is back in action. Milligan knocking this one forward. Now a chance maybe for Hendry to test young Fleming. And Hendry's got goal side here. And Milligan with a very, very important interception there. Jimmy Phillips. Milligan there did some great work chasing back to deprive Henry. It looks a little bit incensed, Johnny Henry, but I don't think he had a case there. Adams knocking this forward up towards Olney and Ritchie, who just got in each other's way in the end. There's Henry again for Middlesbrough. And a right old tussle already between him and Craig Fleming. Well, we're going to have a look at this incident here. He just uses his body strength, John Henry there, and this is where it's important. You see he's hooked his left arm there, around John Henry's body. I think that's what he's complaining about. But as you can see from the picture, the referee on the wrong side to see that. But a good intervention nonetheless from the skipper. 
pointing up towards Ritchie, but beaten in the air by the Scottish international White. Jobson again, he's had an outstanding season for Oldham, but it's sometimes been amid considerable debris around him in the defence. Milligan. Poynton, Adams has gone wide if he wants to use him. Instead, he looks to narrow it. That's where he should have gone right in. Up. Yeah, you were right, that's where he should have gone wide. He did a great position, Neil Adams. Middlesbrough nil, Oldham nil in a game of crucial importance down in the relegation area. Henry sprung from midfield, but across was Nicky Moen. That's one area they've got to be very careful, Middlesbrough, with Bernard, Adams and Henry, all capable and all very willing to run forward and pass the ball in. And certainly the midfield players of Middlesbrough really have a defensive responsibility tonight. Now, Oldham have a free kick here in quite a promising position. The foul was on Adams. The defenders have moved forward here, notably Jobson, who can be dangerous from these sort of situations. Richie was trying to get in on the near post. Back in by Henry, but uh, Richie offside by several yards. Not the best delivery from the free kick there, but you can see as Andy Richard going and challenged at the near post, couldn't get out quick enough. I think that one of the easier decisions that the Lynchon will have. Wilkinson winning this one, but only to Milligan. Oldham have been first to settle here, without creating anything very concrete. You sometimes find that happens with the pressure on the home side to go forward and win the match, Ian, and, and losing so vital, they don't from Middlesbrough, you sometimes find it takes the home team a little bit longer to settle. What they'll be looking for will be one little move, a good little movement, a chance, a shot at goal, just to settle them down. Moen with the free kick for Middlesbrough. Jobson is up there again, and he was pushing. Looks a little bit bemused at the decision. There's Jobson. Jobson, of course, who's on standby for the uh, England trip to Turkey. Well, I don't think we'll find much daylight between these two tonight. I said this could be a key area, and I think that'll prove so. Paul Wilkinson is vital in the attacking options of Middlesbrough. And Richard Jobson, as you say, has had a fine season. His defensive ability really will, could be questioned tonight. Well, this is about 25 yards out. It's certainly within striking distance. Jimmy Phillips is there, along with Andy Peake. And Robbie Musto, which of them is going to hit it? Looks like Phillips with the left foot. Not going to score like that. Middlesbrough, in fact, have only scored four goals in this uh, pretty bad run they've been having of late in the last ten games. Yeah, goal scoring has been a problem. But, I mean, he just lost his foot near Joe Phillips trying to connect with the ball. In fact, Middlesbrough haven't won here at Ayrson Park in the Premier League since January the 26th when they beat Southampton 2-1. Long time for their fans to wait. Here is Phillips again. Not a bad looking ball down the channel for Hendry, but Fleming is sticking to him like a leech. He could almost be wearing Hendry's shirt so far. Phillips taking it quickly, playing the 1-2. Hendry, and once again, the youngster He's done pretty well, a uh, young man who was signed from Halifax and has come right from the basement division to the top division and done quite well. Yeah, he's going to have to be very alert tonight, Craig Fleming. As John Henry will take him in areas he doesn't want to go and move him about. Gerard punching, not too effectively. Wilkinson on the turn. And Alden great thought to scramble that one away. Tommy Wright, up towards Wilkinson, good little flick on, Moen's come forward here from the back, Jobson's there, but Middlesbrough just turning the screw a little bit for the first time, and over the top of his own bar by Gerrard. Well, a little bit of indecision between Gerrard and Jobson there that allowed Nicky Moen to get across in there, and the goalkeeper taking no chances about catching a greasy ball this early. Nicky Moen now making something out of nothing almost. And, uh, the young keeper, only 20. He's really had a baptism of fire in the Premier League since he came in in December. 
Now Richie. Now oh, that's good play by Richie. Really clever play to find Bernard. Poynton's come forward here down the left if he can get there, but he can't. Eric White is across. Lovely bit of play that by Richie in the build-up. Just turning it into Bernard's path. And Oldham with the throw. Here's Andy Ritchie again. He's trying to buy a half yard for the cross, but playing it out in the end. Three times top scorer for Oldham Athletic, Andy Ritchie. And of course, the former Manchester United Brighton and Leeds man. But uh, struggling to get his sharpness back, and that's been another blow for Joe Royal. And he's had a few with injury this year. Push on Wilkinson by Jobson. It's Middles for the free kick. Here's Fleming. Up for Hendry. Again, Fleming coming out on top in that battle. Which looks like being a plot that will thicken all night long. Gonna Haller. Holden trying to engineer something down this right hand side. Played in towards Ritchie. Beaten in the air by Moen. And scrambled clear by Andy Peake. Poynton. Olney. Onside. Just forced a little bit wide. The bounce wasn't too kind to him. And Jimmy Phillips needs no second invitation. Right for Middlesbrough. And they played it a bit square and it's allowed Oldham to get men back behind the ball. But here is Polk now breaking onto this one and well played by young Peter Gerard. That was a great run from Willie Faulkner. Had the ball just held up another half yard for him. He would just have been nicking it over, told Gerard. But a good goalkeeper for the youngster. He knew he had to make the ball his and he did so. Paul Gerard, his only clean sheet so far against Manchester United. Here he is in action, Andy. Yeah, it's cut this flame and it produces a ball. And you see how close Faulkner is to latching onto it. It's good goalkeeping. Wilkinson. Peak breaking forward, pointing with the clever back header. Little Nick Henry can't keep it in. Nicky Henry has scored within 48 seconds against Queen's Park Rangers. Fastest goal of the weekend. Wilkinson trying to get there and going down in the penalty area. And Calvin Morton waves aside all hopes of a Middlesbrough penalty. Yeah, it's good defending at the end from Richard Jobson. Of course, they're absolutely haunted around here, you know, Andy, because last time they came up, they went down straight away. So he's wanting Gerard to come and get it, Richard Jobson. You can see that, but it holds up, and then he just has to get his body in front of Paul Wilkinson. And he's doing nothing wrong there if you're a defender. Jobson and Wilkinson. They have several more tussles as this goes on. Big appointment this for Calvin Morton, the referee. Yesterday he was the ref in that uh, South End Millwall game that ended 3-3, and he sent off a former Middlesbrough player, Colin Cooper, of Millwall. Haller. Into the path of Olney, but his first touch allowed Moen to get in. But here's Poynton now. White with the header. Musto with the clearance. Two sides here literally fighting for their Premier Division lives with all the financial implications of that of course Adams being deployed more centrally tonight Haller well, it was the kind of ball where somebody might have made a run into that channel but it was probably hit a bit too hard as well 
It just looked like he ran in there and was running out of ideas going to Halla. The more confident start in the game has certainly come from Oldham. Hendry roaming around and trying to create some havoc. He might do it here too. And bouncing around dangerously, Jobson to the rescue for Oldham before Wilkinson could pounce. Fleming. Not away yet, bouncing around very dangerously and they're almost forced for Falconer. And Oldham just living dangerously for a moment there. Jimmy Phillips here on this left-hand side. Made room for the cross. Oh, and it was wasted with four red shirts waiting. Well, he did the difficult thing very, very well. And the easy thing, quite truly. Gunnar Haller. He's been one of the few Scandinavian success stories so far in the English football. Poynton, good little run from Nick Henry. Here's Bernard. Henry's carried on with his run. Bernard goes the other way. And Phillips has to win this. He does. Just a bit of a buzz about Oldham at the moment. Poynton. Richie looking to knock it down. Haller once again. Blue shirts congregating in the middle. Here's the cross from Richie. Knocked down by Bernard towards Olney, but Peak was in there for Middlesbrough. There's a nervousness about Middlesbrough at the moment. There really is. certainly have been few and far between for them since Christmas they've only got seven points which is uh, catastrophic for them really well it's understandable why they find themselves in this predicament then when you see that kind of record seven points in fact out of a possible 39 to be at the Lenny Lawrence, when we covered the uh, Middlesbrough at Villa Park, when Villa absolutely hammered him, in, he was very concerned that night that he felt his team had to show a lot of character, or he, he felt they would be drawn into the relegation area, and they were quite comfortable in mid-table at that time. And he's been proved right. Now Milligan's breaking forward, White is there. Back in again, it's too long for Richie, though. Yeah, you're right, Andy, they were 12th on Boxing Day, and they were in the top half till November. And now, of course, they're right in the middle of the fight at the bottom. This is Ian Ironside, who's been deputising for Steve Pears. Wilkinson knocks this on towards Hendry. And forming again, reading things very well. He's made an outstanding start at the back for Oldham. Good flick on that was by Adams. Here's Bernard waiting for support. Haller might provide it down the right. Good enterprising attack by Oldham. Falconer getting in the important tackle. Yeah, it's good tracking back by Willie Falconer and Vital as well. Richie. Haller and Richie again. Good turn by Richie, but a little too close for him in the end. Now Hendry. Little Tommy Wright looking to attack. He's got a bit of pace as well. Once again, Fleming was in there. Offside flag is up. It's a pity in that last attack. They just overdid it a little bit in this near side. And a lovely opportunity with plenty of men in the penalty area to produce a cross. But Andy Ritchie just overdid things a little. Good tackle by Haller ahead of Wright. Richie. And Milligan just running into oblivion on this right hand side there. That's a good turn by Henry. Gets the better of Fleming for once. But he didn't give it up, did he, Fleming? Looked for a minute that John Henry would be in a position to produce a cross here again he uses that body strength he's got 
He's really excellent at turning. Your referee plays a good advantage, but that one extra touch on it allowed Craig Fleming to put the tackle in. That's going to be another corner for Middlesbrough. More anxious moments for Oldham and their small group of travelling fans. Here's the corner count. Four to naught for Middlesbrough. Corner is knocked back in, but the whistle's gone for an infringement. Must have been a bit of pushing somewhere. And yeah, a little, a little nudge. Robbie must throw at the edge of the box as it's cleared here. First header, they deal with it quite well and get the header out to the edge of the box. It's just here. See the little arm in the back there of Nick Henry from Rob Musto. And there is uh, Robbie Musto, the former Oxford United player. Cost £375,000. He's missed quite a bit of this season with the injury problems. Bernard to Poynton. Olney. quite interesting to see Neil Adams roll tonight whenever we've seen them lately he's been used in a wide right role but uh, he seems to be playing just behind the front two tonight and here he is Richie's up for support uh, really is full of confidence at the moment Adams and that sometimes is in short supply with uh, players of teams down towards the bottom of the table Haller fallen for Bernard here and Musto gets there first Hendry and Wilkinson combining quite neatly and a bit of a misunderstanding there but at least Hendry can pick it up seeing a lot of the ball John Hendry good work from him again here he's really putting himself about in the Middlesbrough course tonight is John Hendry Richie Adams as you like from him and well the foul was given Curtis Fleming the alleged defender there but, uh, not so too happy about him I can't say I saw too much wrong with that but there you go the ref's closer than I am yeah I think it's going to only be a little nudge here you see he's just hooking him a little bit but as you see there's not an awful lot there point turn well <laughs> it could have been a Steve Staunton style screamer into the far corner as it was it uh, hooked away like a bad goal shot well you don't see many of them I think you don't type shots into that corner from there but certainly Joe Royal will be the happier in my opinion of the two managers at this moment the one thing he will want is with all the good possession that they've had Oldham they really haven't threatened Ian Ironside very much at all Ian and that, that would be the one worrying cause Milligan to Poynton again who gives Oldham a bit of width down that left hand side Henry Fleming is dispossessed Milligan knocking this forward now Olney and uh, well Ian Olney is short of goals he hasn't scored for the last 11 games and uh, Oldham's record signing Derek White here the man who's shadowing him he was a little bit slow Ian Olney to get onto that through ball from Mike Milligan you had him at Villa, of course. Poynton's long throw. Jobson looking for the knock-on. And that's a corner for Oldham Athletic, which I believe is their first. Don't write in to complain if I'm wrong. It is. Adams is going to take it. Men on the near post for a possible flick on, but it goes long with it. Jobson's there dangerously, and there was some pushing on the goalkeeper, Ian Ironside. Yeah, Andy Ritchie, the culprit here. He takes his position at the back post and just watches. Ironside decides to come and make it as. Watch Andy Ritchie there. That's where he gives it free. Goes up early. You know, I sometimes wonder that uh, referees are a little bit kind and a little bit quick, but Andy Ritchie went up very early, as he's entitled to do. Tommy White, 
can't find a way through. Henry coming in, but a free kick's given. Nicky Moen's going to take it. Well, he didn't get the hold of that correctly at all, Moen. So I think you can only feel he must have slipped as he took that. One of the things that Oldham have done better in, in this first half hour as they approach a half hour mark is, they, is the use of the way they've used the fullbacks. We remarked early on how they've had three narrow in midfield both sides. So that's meant there's been lots of space wide. But what Oldham have done better than Halla and Poynton have been willing to go in and join the space as an attacking force. Whereas I think Fleming and Phillips have to take it. stay back in the back four. It's good play by Adams, feeding Paul Bernard, who's found a bit of space, the Scottish under-21 international. And again, an intelligent ball to find Olney, who's given it away to Musto there. Momentum of the attack just lost, but here's Poynton. More controlled look about Oldham's football so far, but as Andy has been telling you, it's been uh, possession without punch. As we've talked about right at the beginning, it's not about how well you play when you're down there. It's at the end of the day, who's picked up the three points? Adams again. Poynton is only. Holds it up quite well this time. The cross and in space there with Bernard. And Oldham Athletic have stolen the lead. Well, the pressure certainly that they've had, you can't see them not being deserving it. It's the first real time that they've got anything on target, and they owe a lot to Ian Olney. Lovely check back, produces a fantastic cross. Bernard pulls away, totally free at the back post, and he gives Ironside absolutely no chance. This is an excellent header. Not easy, look at the power he gets in his neck muscles there. Gives Ironside no chance. Oldham Athletic, strike first here. And you have to say, really, on what we've seen so far, they've deserved it. Joe Royal is going to be pleased about that. Lenny Lawrence, I think, will be furious about the marking at the back post. Uh, it's empty there at the moment. Lenny's probably somewhere up in the stand. Uh, there he is. He's down there now. And uh, more problems. His defence have been giving away far, far too many goals. And that was another, really, where Bernard was just left with a free header. Poynton. Henry making a run from midfield. Older move only one once away in the Premier League all year. That was at Ipswich. There'll be a, an injury stoppage here. So look at that goal again, uh, Andy. Look, look at the marking here on the back post. Yeah, he, he didn't really do an awful lot. Paul Bernard, when you watch it again, as a cross comes in, he just drifts away. He's left, as you say, totally free. But it isn't an easy header, Ian. And not got a lot of space, but look at the accuracy of it. And I don't think Willie Falcon of the number 10 there will be too pleased. Well, Willie's a big lad, he's six foot plus, and he just allowed Paul Bernard to just drift it off his shoulder and allow him a completely free header. So he'll be disappointed. Now, the last time Bernard scored was when Oldham Athletic won away at Ipswich. <laughs> so is that some kind of omen for Joe Royal's side? Just a youngster, he's been left out of the side a bit lately. He was only sub on Saturday. He comes back with what could be an absolutely priceless goal tonight. White gets this one away. Well, I don't think that Joe Royal would be that confident in his defence this year to think that one goal would possibly be enough here. I think when you, when you think you haven't kept a clean sheet in the league away from Boundary Park this year, there's plenty, certainly plenty incentive for Middlesbrough to keep going, isn't there? Falconer has not kept that in on the far side. Well, there certainly has been a bit of an insipid look about Middlesbrough so far. There's a kind of a lack of passion about their play. That's how it looks from this distant perch, but it could all be to do with confidence, I guess. I think it's nervous, as I say. They've looked very nervy from the, from the first minute, and Oldham have pounced on it, to be fair, because they've looked the totally opposite. They've looked very relaxed, very confident. They've all wanted to get on the ball, they've wanted to pass it about, and that's been the feature of this first half hour. Uh, well, he does well in the end, well, that's 
going to be a 50-50 challenge, which Peak wins and sets Tommy right away. Now this could be something for Middlesbrough. Can they strike back here? Here's the cross, Wilkinson closing in, and Gerrard is up, and his handling was superb. Good claim, very good claim by the youngster. A decent ball in, makes his mind up, this is mine. Eyes on it, that's just perfect. Fleming is here for Middlesbrough, Richie for company. The only thing I'd like to see Middlesbrough do is, is get little Tommy Wright on the ball a little bit more. I'm never convinced about going to Haller as a defensive fullback. I think he's great going forward because he teams a lots of problems in, but I think defensively he's not the best in the world. And little Tommy Wright's very Bernard's good. Bernard's here again. And he nearly stole in with a decisive header on the near post. I think he gets the header, doesn't he? As you see, he makes a great run, he attacks the near post, I think he gets there and it just comes off. Jimmy Phillips and goes for the corner. Well, the runs of young Paul Bernard are causing Middlesbrough's defence some problems. Four to two now. And a lot of them have come here tonight and they've passed the ball around and they've come up with a very significant goal. And now here's Neil Adams with the corner for them. Again, he goes for the long one, aimed towards Jobson, who gets there! Yeah! And it's gone in! It's gone in! Only might have got a touch to it on the way through, but it was Jobson's header originally, and this is crisis now for Middlesbrough. Yeah, Richard Jobson gets a great header. He'd only certainly wheeled away, claiming that he gets a touch on it. But he's got that good position just in front of the goalkeeper. If you get there, there's always a chance. Don't know if he gets much on that, but look at him, he's away. He's a striker, he's claiming it. Might just get his toe on the end of this one. This is all about Jobson's ability in the air. But that's a little touch, I think there was, and only wheels away. I think that's one where we're going to have to ask the Oldham camp at half-time. Let's have a look, does he get a touch, Andy? Difficult to say, but I think he must have done. Now, here's Henry. Let's come back to Musto. Middlesbrough badly need a goal now. They've really been stung, and Oldham are in the box seat at 2-0 here, and if they win this one, they climb above Middlesbrough in the dreaded danger zone. Now then, peak here. Wilkinson making a run forward. Here is Wilkinson. And Fleming very cool, but his fast touch let him down there. He nearly let him right. It was nearly a nightmare for the defender. Well, you just get your second goal. The one thing you don't do is take any chances in your own defence. Craig Fleming did that and almost paid the penalty. That was almost composure taken to ridiculous proportions. Here's the corner. Flicked in there, is this going to go in? The shot in the end by White was sliced, but Oldham get away with it. Just, just get away with it, don't they? It's not going for him, you can see that. But it was a lovely corner. Touch is great, and you really need to get someone on the end of it there. You see Wilkins is only inches away from getting contact. Eric White at the final chance, and Wilkinson's closing on this. Gerard's dropped it. And is there a free kick given? There is for the push on the goalkeeper. Wilkinson is not very happy about it. I don't think there can be any doubt that this is a free kick. It comes from a long way for Wilkinson. He was just standing there, and I think you see there, he just jumps totally straight into him. No arguments about a decision there, he can have. Even Andy will concede that one, a man who made a challenge or two like that himself. Never, never. <laughs> Joe Royal, well, can Oldham get out of it at the bottom? They've been in last place for a month or so, and they've been in the dreaded danger zone for even longer than that. What you do have to concede that, certainly, in this first half that Joe Royal's got it spot on. A time when managers down in the bottom, I think, really have to work to earn their money. Joe Royal's picked a, a tactical formation here that for 37 minutes has worked perfectly for him. Oldham leading by two goals to nil as Jobson takes the free kick towards Ritchie, who gets a little flick on. Away by White, back in though by Milligan, White again. 
and then Andy Peak pushing by Hendry, I think it was. What Middlesbrough found difficult to cope with has been a very good movement from Oldham's midfield trio plus Neil Adams. I think the four of them really have given them some problems. Fleming up towards Olney. And I'll argue about that second goal. Was it Olney's or was it Jobson's? I think morally it was probably Jobson's, but that may not be the answer. We'll let you know at half time. What have Morrow's got to do with it? <laughs> You're a striker, he's a centre back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't argue with him, not at that height. <laughs> Richie. Vital Milligan with a little header and he's nearly dropping through here. Oh, and Johnson on the far post. Now, he definitely didn't score there. I don't think Ian O'Neill will be claiming this miss, do you? <laughs> but it's only he goes in there. It's a great ball in from Boyton. Lovely position from Milligan. Super little touch. Only doesn't manage to get anything on it. And Jobson doesn't get enough on it. It certainly was a defender's finish, which the previous one by Jobson wasn't. But what, look at Milligan's position. A lovely little deft touch there. It causes all the confusion. Milligan again. Really now, Ian, it's all about holding on for Middlesbrough, I think, to half time. They can't, they dare lose another goal now. They've just got to steady it a little bit, just lock up shop at the back and get to half time. And Lenny Lawns then, I feel sure, might be prepared to change one or two things. I think the formation he's picked hasn't quite worked for them. And I just wonder if he'll revert back to a more familiar one with the two wide men and actually put John Henry wide in the second half. Sure, it's something to be thinking about. Dropping through here for right, maybe. And then Hendry and Gerard gets there. Important save from the youngster. Well, his handling's been excellent with crosses tonight, but that was an excellent save from a goalkeeper on his line. I don't think John Henry quite gets what he would have wanted on this as it just drops to him. Chokes it into the ground a little bit, and that gives the goalkeeper enough time to get a good hand on it. It's going to be an old one free kick. That was interesting, that shot of Lenny Lawrence just now. He looked like the bloke in the cigar advert, didn't he? What more can go wrong? Some games coming up on Sky Sports for you. The one to look forward to. Turkey against England in the World Cup. Key game, that, of course. Live at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but uh, if you're at work... Don't worry, we'll have you the highlights for you, 8 o'clock in the evening. Turkey against England in the World Cup. Of course, next weekend, a blank weekend in the Premier League in preparation for the uh, international. Fleming is across there again. Now, Poynton. And they keep on hitting balls, Oldham, down into that little area in the left channel for men to make diagonal runs and try and pick it up and make something. And they keep getting midfield players forward as well. In that case, it was again one of the goal scorers, Bernard, who was driving forward into the four area. Jobson. Three kick. Last five minutes of the first half. Oldham Athletic really have had a dream start to this one. Haller has given this to Jimmy Phillips. A goal for Middlesbrough before the break might put a completely different complexion on events with the second half to come. That looked like a foul on right, and uh, Haller's the man responsible for it. See, that's an area, in all honesty, I would be looking to get the ball into. You know, Tommy Wright's basically been starved of it in the first half. He hasn't been given much service to talk about at all. Phillips and Wright trying to cook up something. Phillips's cross is not right. Oldham can counter again here. Henry. 
trying to win it and he was fouled and Oldham will have a free kick well I'm sure Lenny Lawrence would love to get his Middlesbrough players in the dressing room to uh, give them fresh instructions and fresh heart maybe yeah, I think there'll be some tough, tough talking from Lenny when he gets his boys in there he certainly won't be happy with his, his team's first half performance as well as lacking a wee bit of firepower Middlesbrough have looked hesitant and nervous at the back and Oldham have had more than the two chances from which they've created goals Ian Olney and Richard Jobson can argue about that goal but <laughs> he's had so long without a goal that uh, try taking it off him now peak is Haller that'll do as far as Oldham are concerned appeared to be brought down off the ball there play on says the referee Adams feeding it wide to Poynton this is a promising position again for Oldham Henry's made a run forward long towards Ritchie but too close to Ironside well, that's a little example about what I mean in the difference there as soon as it broke who was the furthest man forward breaking the opposite side Neil Poynton Middlesbrough nil Oldham Athletic two Right on the volley. Well, it was ambitious from little Tommy Wright. But he's seen so little of the ball, I'm not surprised he's attempted things like this. But had this gone on, gone in, that really would have been a surprise. It was no immediate threat to Paul Gerrard's goal, in all honesty, from uh, Tommy Wright, who comes from a footballing family. I think his uncle was Jackie Sinclair, the old Leicester winner, and his dad was a Scottish international. So it's in the blood. Falconer getting this one forward towards Wilkinson. But Jobson, who is brought down there by Falconer, who may go in the book for this. Yeah, I think he's going to, Andy. Yes, yeah, a certainty. But a measure of the confidence that Oldham are playing with when Richard Jobson casually brings it down and is, instead of playing it now, he's just taken it out of defence on his own. Falconer is booked for that one. Well, Oldham's form, you know, hasn't been too bad lately. They got that 2-2 draw at Everton with two late goals. They beat Manchester United. They only lost by a goal at Norwich. And then the 2-2 draw with Queen's Park Rangers. Only one defeat in the last four. And 2-0 up here. Signs of a revival, maybe, for the Latics of Oldham Athletic. Poynton to take it. Here's Milligan. Haller. Challenges by Musto. Went on again. Ritchie. They won't bring anything spectacular. He's provided some nice little touches. Jobson's on the far post here, going for the header, as he did for the goal. paid a big compliment to Richard Jobson earlier in the season by Graham Taylor, the England manager, who said he was uh, the most comfortable defender on the ball in English football. That's the last action of the first half. Jobson may well claim that second goal. We'll sort that out for you. It might have been Ian Olney. Paul Bernard certainly scored the first one. And Oldham, in this crucial battle at the bottom of the table, getting the reward for some controlled football. It's Middlesbrough nil. Oldham Athletic, two. Can Middlesbrough come back? Find out when you rejoin us. Welcome back to the Monday Night Football. We'll check out the match facts in a moment or so and hear from Dave Bassett. First of all, let's enjoy the Sky Strikers. Oh, my. 
facts, Middlesbrough nil, Oldham Athletic two, four shots from Borough, one on target, six from Oldham. They've scored with the two that they got on target. Smashing match so far, which just goes to show they are worth covering these games, aren't they? Dave Bassett, the Sheffield United manager, is our guest. Let's have a look back at the best of the action. Paul Bernard scored the opening goal. And Oldham, Dave, you sensed were worthy. They were coming or back. Or this the, at the time, weren't they? Yeah, they, they had weathered the early storm from Middlesbrough, and they were coming back into the game now, and their confidence was building. And uh, they've done well here. It's a good cross. Only does well on the ball. He looks as like if he was going to cross the ball first time. Uh, he comes back, and uh, Barnard's pulled away off of Willie Faulkner, and he's put a very good header away. The goalkeeper doesn't have much chance there. Richie's oh. gone near post, hasn't he? That's right. There we are, he comes back, the ball's there, Fulton stayed in there and uh, he's got a little header down, he's put it away very, very well. I mean, just the tonic that Oldham needed at that stage, it was their real first uh, effort at goal. As you can see, Oldham looks as if he's going to cross it with his left foot and checks back onto his right. Defender doesn't do too particularly well there and everybody's uh, watching the ball and Barnard, he, I mean, he hasn't had to pull off too much but uh, he's, he's, he's far enough away just to put the ball around the corner. Wasn't a bad header, was it? No, very good header. You know, quite powerful and in the corner, in the right spot where the goalkeeper has very little chance of adjusting to it. Apparently they're still arguing in the Oldham dressing room about who scored the second. Let's see if we can tidy it up here. Who do you think, Dave? Well, I think you've got to give it to Olney. He's in, he goes in. Again, not very good marking on the corner. Jobson gets a good header down. It's in there. And, well, I think he would claim that. <laughs> <laughs> and the goalkeeper finds it difficult there. The ball's headed back into that danger area, the six-yard box. Olney's done well, he's in front of the defender and the goalkeeper, and it's hard for the goalkeeper to gather the ball there. And really wasn't what Middlesbrough wanted at that stage, but having said that, uh, you know, Oldham were delighted, and, and it settled them for the rest of the half. I don't think there's any doubt that Ian Olney's going to claim that. Yes, if he hadn't been there, you fancy the keeper would have... Oh yes, he'd, he'd have got that, yeah, if, if only he hadn't have been there. So, I mean, his presence actually put the goalkeeper and defender off. Now, you were saying as the half wore on, what, what Middlesbrough needed was a, a, either a strike before half-time or they will need one. They nearly got back in it with this effort here. That's right, they needed badly to get back into uh, the game, Middlesbrough, to give them the confidence. And, I mean, certainly they'll have to do that in the second half. It's a long free kick from the keeper, it's a bit of a mix-up, and they have a little bit of luck because it uh, drops to Faulkner who heads it in. And uh, it's a fair effort by, does it, Hendry there and the goalkeeper brings off quite a good save. You well, still fancy bad. Middlesbrough to get something, don't you? And if that happens, we have got a game and a half then. Yeah, well, the win's with Middlesbrough now, and Middlesbrough have got to come out and give it the full Monty, as they say. And uh, Mid uh, Oldham are pushing both their full-backs. They've been very attacking-minded tonight. They've come with a positive attitude. But I, I fancy Middlesbrough might get a goal. 2-0 to Oldham at the moment. More from Ayrson Park <coughs> after the break. Sumos are on the way in, as you can see. And entertain the crowd. Keep us warm on a very cold night. Welcome back to the Monday Night Football. Middles for nil, Oldham Athletic. To the half-time scoreline. Sumos, as usual, are going down very well. This is the first you've seen of the Sumos, is it, Dave? Yeah, since they've been around ground, seeing a couple of these, I might just sign one of these before the deadline to <laughs> play out front with Dino. <laughs> that would sort of problem out, wouldn't it? <laughs> now, what do we expect in this second half? Middlesbrough, you were saying during that break there to me, have to strike early now. Yes, they've got to get back into the game, and uh, their confidence will be low. They've got the win with them and they've got to look to get a goal back and that, that gives them a lot to play for then. Oldham will be looking to continue in the vein they've done and uh, catch uh, Middlesbrough on the break and possibly add a third. That is the danger now, really. That, that, that it could end up 3-0 if Middlesbrough are not careful. You think Oldham will keep pushing for the third? Yeah, I think they will because I think that's the way they play. But I think there will be one or two chances come Middlesbrough away. Uh, what's important for them, which they don't do in the, the, what they don't do in the second half, which they did in the first half, I felt that the three forward runners were giving too many free kicks away when they got up and in and around the Oldham penalty area. Let's rejoin Andy Gray and Ian Dark. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, everybody. There's a substitution at half-time, predictably enough, by Middlesbrough. This young fellow, Craig Hignett, the half-million-pound buy from Crew Alexandra, is on. Robbie Musto is off, and they hope that Hignett can come up with a goal or two. 
he's struggled. Lenny Lawrence was telling me to adapt to the pace of the Premier League. That's why he's been in and out of the side. But he is quite a talented player, and he does know the way to go. And Middlesbrough getting us underway, two goals down. And if they lose this one, things will start to look very bleak indeed for them. Oldham, if they can hold on, will move out of the bottom three for the first time since mid-January. They're playing against a stiffening breeze now, though, Oldham. Here's Tommy Wright. I would think that Middlesbrough have had a good old-fashioned roasting at half-time from Lenny Lawrence. They'll be looking for an early goal. Hendry. Good positive run from him. He goes a long way, he goes down in the box. No penalty. Now only for Oldham. White coming forward. Hendry once again, and an offside flag anyway, against Wilkinson in the middle, but uh, not that it mattered too much. No, no surprise as you say that the change. I did suggest that they may revert back to a more familiar style. That's what they've done. Henry and Tommy Wright now playing wide. Tommy Wright on this near side, John Henry on the left, and I think he'll try and get it to Henry as often as possible to that Gunnahalla, who's actually struggling at the moment. He's got picked up a bit of an injury on his first challenge against John Henry. But the one question mark for me will be, against Oldham will be, with this stiffening breeze as you suggested, Ian, can they get out or will they camp on the edge of their box? That'll be the thing to watch for, how quickly they can get out and put some pressure on Middlesbrough. Let's get a touchline uh, report from Nick Collins who has some news for us. Ian, yeah, well, let's try and clear up that goal first of all. Ian Olney definitely claiming it, though uh, Richard Jobson isn't entirely convinced that he got a touch on it, but uh, Ian Olney, as far as he's concerned, that's a goal for him. And uh, just to let you know what the Middlesbrough uh, team talk was at half-time, Lenny Lawrence says that uh, Barrow need better crosses into the Oldham box and they need to defend their crosses better. That's been the difference between the two sides, he thinks. Lenny Lawrence has been uh, in more great escapes than Richard Attenborough and Steve McQueen combined, of course, in his Charlton days, but it might be a fight again this time. Well, it is a fight. He's right. Phillips. Pignett, the substitute. Is brought down. And uh, getting into a bad tempered exchange there with Fleming. And uh, more argy bargy between those two off the ball, by the way, as the ball is pumped in. And no threat again from Moen this time. I think the, the scene's been set for the second half. I think Middlesbrough have got to take risks got to gamble, got to throw men forward and without the Oldham's defensive ability and just what they can do when they break out of defence but look at the strength of the wind we were talking about Paul Bernard can't even take a goal kick yes we had a real icy blast from the North Sea at half time with rain sweeping across the pitch and you can see look there that uh, Gerard can't get the goal kick anywhere near the halfway line Hignick closing in on this Fleming wants Gerrard off his line and eventually he's there. So at times like this when defences, back fours have to be brave. And by that I mean they have to push up and take normal defensive positions. And I think you can do that and be confident that anything over the top will most surely run through to your goalkeeper or run out of play. But if you decide to camp on the edge of your box then you can invite pressure continuously in the half. Yes, there's always that temptation to sit on it a bit, but sometimes, and I've seen it countless times, it can backfire on you. Falconer getting past the challenge. And the shot is no threat at all to the Oldham goal. Willie Falconer, who was booked in the first half. By the way, on the run in Middlesbrough, have home games against Everton, Arsenal, Spurs and Norwich on the last day. That could be a vital game, couldn't it? They're away to Chelsea, Palace in another six-pointer, and Sheffield Wednesday. Though they do play Arsenal two days after their FA Cup semi-final. That might be a decent time to play them. Sheffield Wednesday away is a week after the League Cup final. Flicked on by Adams. There's much more confidence and swagger about Oldham 
than one has seen from them so far this season. Middlesbrough needs something and fast. Fleming down the line for Tommy Wright, who's hugging this right-hand touch line at the start of the second half. He's allowed space for the cross, maybe too much space, but it's a goal kick. But this is where the danger for Oldham is going to come from, the wide areas from Wright and from Henry. And it's Craig Hignett trying to get in there and just gets a little too much in his header. And we, had, we remarked and complimented Joe Royal and his tactical selection in the first half and I, don't, I just wonder whether he's going to be tempted soon to change it if the wide men get some joy because he's got now got four very tight in this midfield area perhaps to give his fullbacks a lot of help it might be worthwhile I'm just saying to, to Adams and either Bernard or Henry then go and play wide and just a normal midfield four Phillips through to Wilkinson and then nothing for Middlesbrough and I think Oldham expect to have to absorb fairly heavy pressure and maybe increasingly feverish pressure as the half goes on from a pretty desperate Middlesbrough now who find themselves teaming down here at home. Now here's Nicky Henry, a little scouser in the midfield. Adams. Bernard was in a lot of room there. Forward if they could have found him now. Middlesbrough though. Tommy Wright on the left foot. Into the middle, aim towards Wilkinson again. Jobson is there for Oldham. Fleming. Good run from the fullback. Hignett. No room for the shot. Hignett really putting himself about there with Poynton, and here's the cross. Offside flag was up on the far side. Yeah. Paul Wilkinson had just drifted in, but this is exactly the type of response he would have wanted when he lost. He suddenly seemed to have an extra competitive edge, an extra desire from the Middlesbrough players to get back in the game. No doubt with Lenny Lawrence's half-time team talk ringing still in their ears, he would have demanded much more urgency and passion from them and reminded them that their Premier Division status could be at stake. Challenged by Falconer, wins it for Wright, who's becoming more involved in the cross. Looked quite inviting until Fleming got there for Oldham. Poynton getting it away. And Olney. Oldham just cannot keep possession at the moment. They're pinned in their own half. Pete getting this one forward. Wilkinson on the turn. Major battle between Wilkinson here and Jobson. One of the key areas of the match. Mowen pumping it forward and towards Wilkinson again Jobson gets there Adams Andy Ritchie holding it up well and retaining possession but now Middlesbrough have the chance to break with red shirts pushing forward and white it is with the rising drive wow, the super run there from Derek White took the initiative the gap's in front of him and he doesn't turn it down, just gets a little bit underneath it. I'm looking at Joe Royal, he's been off the, the bench there and he's had Neil Adams and he's, I think he's doing what I suggested he might do. He's pulled Neil Adams and he's certainly pulled him to the wide right area. And I just wonder how long it will be and it looks like Nicky Henry is now moving over to this near side. And I think that makes sense to me. You have to try and stop the service to the wide men because that's what Middles are looking for. Well, that free kick was taken a good four yards ahead of where the offence occurred, but Calvin Morton keeping the game going. Okay. Well, Neil Adams will score his first ever league goal for Stoke against Middlesbrough early in his career. Charging away here. Fleming won it well. Moen forward. Here's right. Middlesbrough buzzing a little bit. Looking to create something. Up goes Wilkinson for the header. Good downward header. Milligan got it away. And it could fall here for Falconer, but no, because Milligan was there again. And Henry, good play from him. 
looks up to see what support is around he can switch it right just telegraphed it a bit and Moen was in there and Fleming did a good job again there for Oldham the youngster is keeping Steve Redmond out of the side in the number six shirt now Peak breaking from the midfield and again Fleming across well he'd be a contender for man of the match if you were having the poll now Pointing, who was dropped for a time and then injured in that Sheffield United match. Fleming's long throw, Wilkinson trying to win it, but Jobson out jumps him. Crucial period of the game, you feel this, particularly for Oldham with the two goal cushion, which they would desperately want to retain. If Middlesbrough get one, it really could be like the Alamo in that penalty area. I think it'll be like that no matter how long they stay, even at 2-0, you know, and I think they've just got to throw men forward. Tell you who's got a vital job for Oldham in the second half, the two front men. And I, by that I mean that when Oldham are clearing their lines, and it's up to Richie and Olney to give their defence a breather, to hold on to the ball, to protect it with their lives, basically. Wilkinson wins this one well. Well one by Hallow, seems to be over that little knock he took. Phillips, Middlesbrough aided by this wind whipping in off the North Sea. Will their natural habitat come to their aid in a time of crisis? Middlesbrough's free kick. It's long and Gerrard. And the pressure once again from the marauding Wilkinson. That's probably what Lenny Lawrence is talking about though. This one again is a little bit too near the goalkeeper. Gives them the chance to come out and take what would have been a comfortable catch without the challenge of Wilkinson. And of course, all those free kicks like that are being blown into an in-swinging arc by the wind. Fleming, easy one for Brighton. And Oldham don't hold it up in the way that Andy was talking about. White, the ball for Headnet. Importantly by Haller before Henry could break through. And that's exactly what I meant. Ian Ian only had the ball. And if, if they don't hold it, if they don't protect it well, then the defence is immediately under pressure again. But they've done it much better this time. Again, another nice little touch by Andy Ritchie, hoping to get this attack going. But Oldham. He's done a very unspectacular but solid little job for Oldham tonight, Andy Ritchie. Good to see him back. Jobson wins this one in the air. Pete getting it forward. Hignett's chasing. Andy Peake, who was in the same Leicester side as Gary Lineker and has been a, a kind of first lieutenant for Lenny Lawrence through quite a bit of his career, notably in the, uh, the Charlton era when Charlton perennially escaped the drop by miraculous means. Middlesbrough, should they lose this, may be in need of similar types of miracles. Well, there is a bit of a way to go yet on the run in. Taken quickly here. And between them, the Middlesbrough defence crowding older out. Keep getting this forward. It nearly went over the head of Ponton, hitting up with him behind him. Here's Moen. Pointing for Oldham. He's going to go it alone. Really good positive break by Poynton. And he was looking for Richie's run, but Richie was offside. But Neil Poynton here having a fine game. The former Manchester City man. A lot of the Manchester City fans are sorry to see him leave. And with runs like this, you can see why. Yeah, I'd like to have seen him go on Neil Poynton there. He had a fine head of steam up. Really could have attacked Derek White. Still Oldham. Leading by two goals to nil as the hour approaches now. Middlesbrough's early assaults in the second half have been repelled. You can almost feel the tension around here at the bottom of the table. The Middlesbrough fans, quiet, anxious. Derek White, a former Celtic man. Scottish international, had that shot just now. 
Hendry with those bow legs of his trying to find a way through. Here's Hignett, trying his luck and not a bad try. Wind assisted too. Oh, that's a great effort from Craig Hignett. Not much back left, didn't have an awful lot of room to move. You see that, it's tied up between his feet there. And he's just leaning back slightly as he makes contact with the ball. John Henry was the one who instigated it all, but a fine run though. I still think that's the way for Middlesbrough with John Henry and Tommy Wright. If they can get the ball to those two wide men, that looks the most likely area where the goal comes from. Hignett flicking this on, hoping for Wilkinson. And Johnson is cool as you like. I think one of the key things for Oldham tonight has been how well the two central defenders have played, Jobson and Fleming. And uh, well, this season, defence has been a major problem for Oldham Athletic. The leakiest defence in the Premier League. But it has been improving a bit lately. Richie, Adams, Milligan making the run from midfield, no one across doing the covering. Oldham Athletic snipping out and scenting what would be only their second away win of the entire season. Haller, and offside, probably three of them in the end. <laughs> Anyone from free, I take a pick. A three card trick. It's close, if you look at that right side of your screen, Curtis Fleming there. I think he's very relieved, actually, to see the flag go up. It was either three or none, wasn't it, Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> Hit long this time. Johnson taking responsibility. Jimmy Phillips. Good little ball in for Peek, who lets it run intelligently. Now Fleming's got a chance of a shot. And uh, it's well worth having shots, really, from that kind of range, because the shots are being given extra velocity by this wind. I think you're right, and anything that along this sort of area, then they must take the option to hit the target. But that's the one thing they haven't done. Three times they've tried it in the second half. Not once have they tested the goalkeeper. He's never scored for Middlesbrough yet, Curtis Lemming, but uh, well, I guess there's a first time for everything. Phillips is across for Middlesbrough. On by Peak. Only to Jobson. And Gunnar Haller slicing it into touch on that far side. Oldham, of course, who've been cast really as the lovable Latics, Lattic, a humble side from below stairs who've had an adventure in the big league, but can they carry on with the adventure? Sentiment is usually in short supply at this stage of the season. Milligan, nice ball that for Henry, here's Poynton, looking for support, oh he's making a diagonal run if he wants to use him, Middlesbrough try route one this time and you can see how strong that wind is Andy, and that's what I mean about defence is if you're brave and you push up there, you see how it just runs through at the goalkeeper but being brave and pushing up, it's easy to say from here, Ian. It's far more difficult to do if you're the two centre-backs of Oldham. Milligan and Henry combining. And scrap the possession, but Milligan there did well. Good pass with the ball and finding Adams. Adams, who's been Oldham Athletic saviour a bit of late with the uh, winner against Manchester United, the two late goals against Everton, and the last-minute equaliser against Queen's Park Rangers at the weekend as well. He's buzzing a bit. Here he is now. Haller. And Phillips for Middlesbrough, who still can't find the breakthrough. Hendry. He's worked harder than most trying to engineer it. Here he is again. Defensive job well again. Phillips. Adams hooking it away. That's 
a good ball. Tommy Wright here and Jobson is across again with a marvellously timed challenge. Well, he's got the responsibility of Paul Wilkinson, but he showed there he's got the experience as well of sizing up a situation. Flicked on by Falconer. Where's this going to drop? Wilkinson can't reach it. Bernard has scored the important first goal. Ooh, Fleming sold himself a bit there and led only in behind him. Well, that was a good challenge back by him. Henry Bernard. No one doing the covering for Middlesbrough. Don't forget vital games coming up as well at the bottom later in the week with uh, Sheffield United away at Coventry and Nottingham Forest travelling to Southampton on Wednesday night. Sheffield United will be in the bottom three by then. Whatever result tonight, they were uh, consigned to that fate, at least for 48 hours. Dave Bassett, of course, among our guests. We'll be hearing from him a bit later. Fleming's long throw is aimed towards Wilkinson. Run by Poynton. Pick back in. I think this, the time has come for another substitution here. You can see Chris Kamara making his way to the edge of the pitch. Looks like Kamara will be entering the fray at any moment. Middlesbrough have to try something different. They still really haven't seriously tested Paul Gerrard in the second half, despite having, uh, well, 90% of the possession, really. Or pressure, anyway. Adams. And that's gone out of play, and it's a chance for the substitution. And it's Andy Peake, I think, who's going to have to come off. Indeed it is. And Chris Kamara, 35 years of age, and on loan from Luton Town. The eighth move of his career, by the way. I'd like to be his estate agent. He comes on, utility player Kamara. be interesting to see how he's deployed there's his first touch well that'll be a straight swap i think ian nothing but just coming in for andy peak but what i tell you not a bad lad to bring on if you look to fire up your team for a final surge and a lot last push then he certainly is capable of getting his men going chris kamara bad moments for lenny lawrence at the moment side in search of some kind of salvation here but they have what is it 22 minutes to find it the Oldham look more comfortable now than they have looked in this second half they altered the shape I mean the shape they took for the first half was was great it got them the two goal lead and Middlesbrough were never quite able to cope with it but Joe Royal credit him he changed it he was quick enough in the second half to change the shape of his side and go a little bit more defensively protect his full backs with two wide men and that certainly made him a happier man, isn't it? <laughs> well, at least he can smile amid all the tension of the relegation battle. But there may still be time for Middlesbrough if they could get one. Certainly make the last 20 minutes very, very tense and dramatic indeed. As it is, Oldham hold on, but now a free kick and the two subs other ones hovering by the ball. It looks like it's going to be Hignett who'll hit it. Here he is. Hignett takes it. And now he screwed that really off the outside of his boot. A long, long way wide for Paul Gerrard's goal. Well, they've had plenty of shots, Andy, but they just can't find the target. They can't bring the keeper into action. No, they can't. And, that, and that's been the thing from the second half. They've, been, they've looked willing. They've wanted to shoot, they've wanted to get Paul Gerrard into the game in some way, but they've not been able to test the young goalkeeper at all. Phillips, Hendry, Kamara with the diagonal run has not kept the ball in play. Let's have a look at the number of shots so far. Middlesbrough have had 11, Oldham have had 6, 
And of course, Oldham lead by two goals to nil, as if you needed reminding. I bet of those 11, about one's been on target though, and that's been the important start. Jobson there again. And you can see why Graham Taylor's been impressed with him. There's the shots on target, Andy. Yeah, that's right, one out of 11 on target, and that's what's let them down tonight. This was a key game, really, for both of these clubs, of course. If Middlesbrough had won it, they'd have been five points clear of Oldham, and uh, that might have been decisive in the relegation fight as it is. Oldham, if they keep it like this, will leapfrog above Middlesbrough. There's a lot left in this game for Middlesbrough. There's no reason why they should think they, they still can't win it. I know it may sound crazy, but all they need, I think, one goal for them would suddenly the crowd would be up, the players would be up, and that's what they're looking for, just the one little break. Tommy Wright! another chance really to test the goalkeeper and another chance not taken yeah, he gets himself in there and he manages to get turned on the ball he is pressed very quickly by Jobson and that's probably what made him screw it wide yes if Middlesbrough you feel got one would that set a few alarm bells ringing in the Oldham defence and uh, it would certainly get the crowd on their feet as it is, the crowd are just chewing their fingernails and they might not have many left come uh, May the 8th. That's how tense it is. And, uh, the seats now are bound around Ayrson Park. The best crowd they've had here this season was for the visit of Newcastle. Surprise, surprise, in the Coca-Cola. 24,000. Here they are again. Still no way through. This time Kamara. Fleming. Hignett trying to get in here. And Jobson cool enough. Poynton. Nino is the Oldham players call him, I understand. And there he is again. Falconer's ball, and an offside flag, it's just total frustration for Middlesbrough at the moment. They came up before, and in 88-89 they went down, here's the, uh, here's the offside. Yeah, he's just anxious to get forward, Drake Hignett, and he just goes a little bit too early. free kick it's been a good battle all night that hasn't it Ian Jobson and Wilkinson it has and here's Falconer closing in Wilkinson's there as well Gerard has to punch it still not away Gerard again fists it to safety this time drops to Kamara and could this be a goal it isn't this time and Gerard down again Jimmy Phillips had stormed forward from the back it's a great ball from Chris Kamara, it really was. I mean, great confusion here, twice the goalkeeper's called in, Wilkinson makes a great challenge. But look at Gerrard's up again and punches it clear, but it's this little ball here, as it breaks to Chris Kamara. Watch the way he just picks out Jimmy Phillips. Doesn't look like he wants to shoot, but when he calls the goalkeeper into action, he's found to be big enough to cope with it. Chris Kamara trying to work something now fashion some chances for Middlesbrough they haven't been able to create many but this young goalkeeper's done very well he started the season as number three of course and injuries to Holworth and uh, Keeley at some times as well has let him in here is Kamara once again this time to Fleming more defending for Oldham to do and uh, get a corner here Middlesbrough Wright's corner. And very good defensive header by Fleming. Or was it Bernard? Bernard it was who got back to get that header in. Kamara. Phillips. 
Good flick by Falconer. Wilkinson can't get there because Fleming hammers it away deep into those fans on the far terracing. Oldham now are 15 minutes away from what would be three precious, priceless points for them. And the cross shot from Derek White, who'd stormed forward from the back. Well, they took Candiretti completely by surprise, Derek White here with this run. And he's not so far away with this shot, I tell you. But again, it's that thing of the second half. They're not hitting the target often enough. Derek White, who arrived in the uh, £1.6 million deal, which took Andy Payton to Celtic, and brought Chris Morris and Derek White here to Essen Park. Falconer, Wilkinson. Referee pulls back the play for an infringement on Falconer. And Middlesbrough have another free kick. Rising pressure bit by bit from Middlesbrough up goes Wilkinson dropping towards Kamara Falconer had handled it I just wonder there I don't know whether he was inside or whether he, he, he quite lost his bearings Paul Wilkinson but I was quite surprised to see this come back the way instead of go towards goal a little flick forward there towards the goal he's only seven or eight yards out Richie's away here for Oldham this could finish it but not this time. 54 weeks, he's waited for a goal. There was an opportunity. It was a golden opportunity. When he's away, he's clear. He could wrap up things. He could be going home now. But he looks to be a little bit too delicate there for me, looking for the chip. A fit Andy Ritchie, I'm sure, would have been more positive and clinical in that situation. Now that could have killed Middlesbrough stone dead. As it is. They still chase something. Here's Hignett. Will it drop for him? Good play from Hignett. And he can't finish. Did everything right except the last piece of the jigsaw. Yeah, it was all super individual skill from Craig Hignett. New point just gets a little touch on it, but Hignett's quick to react. He's the quickest. He's the first. Great skill here. Two little touches, but when it mattered most, he couldn't provide the important one. Look at that. Great skill there. Gets it twice. It's there for him, hit the target, but he fails to do so. Well, I'll tell you, who'd be a Middlesbrough fan here tonight? Nothing hitting the target. What can they come up with this time? Poynton is there. Kamara. Frantic defending. And Hignett again trying to turn inside, but no joy once more. Richie flicked on towards Olney. White shrugs him aside. Offside here. Well, I reckon Lenny Lawrence, 45 years of age, he's going to finish this match about 65, isn't he, Andy? Well, I've had plenty of attempts and goals we've said, and Lenny will be disappointed that his team just haven't tested the goalkeeper enough. And if you don't hit the target, that old saying, you're never going to score a goal. Well, managers, of course, try to be philosophical, but it must be hard in this kind of situation. Poynton. Flick out is Richie. He might get another bite, and once again, Richie, who's been such a deadly striker in his time for Oldham, just can't find his shooting boots. An offside flag against Adams. Well, this is his second chance now. Lovely little flick from Olney here. The first one, he gets a rebound. Now, his technique is normally very good in this situation, Andy Ritchie. But perhaps just showing there how few games he's actually played. Will Oldham live to regret those couple of misses by Richie? It went for the corner. And this could be a devilish inswinger with this wind around. Mara's on the line. Gerard's handling. Well, it was an easy routine catch for a goalkeeper at this level. Yeah, this one is more easy catching than the night, wasn't it? And they're looking at that near post area, but that, again, this shows you the importance of the delivery, how it's got to be perfect.
Poynton. Some disillusioned Middlesbrough fans beginning to trail away disconsolately, but uh, fans have done that before. Left grounds with their teams 2-0 down, and then they've heard later that they won 3-2. Middlesbrough are still looking for something, and there's still time. No less of it with every passing second, of course. Kamara, that's a foul. Taken quickly. Hignett. And Ritchie showing his experience there. In goes Mellon. That will be fine as far as Oldham are concerned. He's taken a deflection because it's Middlesbrough's throw. Phillips here. Falconer going up for this one. Bernard got up very, very well indeed. He's not a tall man, but he got up with a header well there. A great spring it was from Bernard. Curtis Fleming. Here's Hignett. Was he held off there by Fleming? One or two screams from the Middlesbrough fans, but uh, the players significantly not too many protests. Yeah, I think right as well. I agree with the referee here. Just shepherd the ball. You see that? Doing nothing wrong except just encouraging the ball back to his goalkeeper. Just wondered whether Fleming was uh, pulling him back, but maybe not. Phillips to Falconer. Falconer is impeded on the way through, and Middlesbrough have yet another free kick. But they've got to make one of these promising positions count. Here's Moen. He's put it in. Was it offside? It wasn't. Middlesbrough now have got a lifeline. Oldham were looking for the offside. Nicky Moen sprung the trap. Are back in business. Here. Watch the number 11. He's the key. The old number 11. They all go out. He stays in. You can see there, Moen's not offside. And at last, they finally get past Paul Gerard. It's a dangerous policy that, if everyone's not clued into it. And Paul Bernard goes to sleep. And Oldham now have got what? Seven or eight winning minutes probably ahead. Well, those fans who left will be wishing now they didn't, 2-1. And Mills will be looking to get it forward at every opportunity. Right now, with Henry. Storming forward, Middlesbrough are looking for the equaliser. We could be in here for a very, very dramatic finish. <laughs> There's no penalty there, right, I think, rather looking for it. I was a bit surprised at that, I thought Tommy Wright was past them. And he will need to be looking for anything there. You watch as he comes in, he has got past them, and he does nothing wrong going to Halla, but Tommy Wright just falls over. No penalty. Well, hope springs eternal for Lenny Lawrence. Two one to hold on. It's every bit as tight and tense as we thought it would be. Richie is onside here. He's got Henry in support. And Richie has finished it this time. 3-1 Oldham. Andy Richie's first goal for a year has surely delivered three points to the Latics of Oldham Athletic and Joe Royal. Well, this is awful defending from Derek White. You watch the number six here. Andy Richie makes it on the look. Number six, she stands the fourth two. Standing, waiting for offside, it was never going to come. And he gets it perfectly right this time. The goalkeeper's committed to the dive, and Richie coolly lost it over him. A sweet, sweet moment this for Andy Richie, who's had so many injury problems. He'd squandered two other chances, he didn't squander the third. Amazing, and they, they work so hard to get themselves back in the game. And then just when they need it most, the two centre-backs who have hardly had to defend 
all of the second half just go to sleep. Middlesbrough one, Oldham three, inside the last five minutes now. And Middlesbrough, having given themselves a chance of a point, immediately surrender that chance, or so it would seem, unless we're going to have yet more happenings in the last five minutes. Well, I think we would have been surprised if Oldham would have kept a clean sheet. I think that was one thing they said, they have been able to do it away from home, but I think we'd also be surprised if Middlesbrough can conjure up Another couple of goals in this last five minutes. Falconer. Haller got in well. Is Olney. Bernard. Hustled out of it by Kamara. Right. Now Moen. Wilkinson flicks it on. Point and belts it away as far as he can manage. Here's Wilkinson again with Jobson. Oldham Athletic now within sight of only their second away win of the season. And Middlesbrough, who lost their last home game against Liverpool, and the one before that against Nottingham Forest, and the one before that against Coventry could be heading for a fourth successive home defeat. You just cannot afford those when you're down in the dreaded bottom three. If he stays like this, Nottingham Forest will be bottom of the table in a few minutes' time, unless Middlesbrough have something else in store. Little flick head out of the goal! Hignett's done it, he's put Middlesbrough back in it again. Well, what a finish this is, Gerrard can't believe it, but Craig Hignett has scored. Well, it's a good ball in, and for once, Fleming's not in the right position. You see, he's in front of Hignett, and it's a lovely little header, it has to be said. You watch the way he just guides the ball, look at that. Guides it right into the corner to give the goalkeeper no chance. Well, I did say, I didn't think they'd get two, but who knows in this game. Fourth goal for Craig Hignett for Middlesbrough, but his first since he scored at Aston Villa in mid-January, the last time we had them on on uh, Sky Sports. A frantic finale at Aston Park. Well, Oldham seemed absolutely hell-bent on making life difficult for themselves. Olney. Really was a very sweet finish, though, by Hignett, wasn't it? That was a lovely header. Jobson letting it run. Inside the last two minutes. This has been some game, Andy. Yeah, I just wonder, Derek White there, I wonder what he's thinking now. Had he and Nicky Moen just been a little bit more disciplined five minutes ago. They might just be looking for a victory here rather than a drawing. These are quite stopping moments for the fans of both of these clubs now. Middlesbrough fans praying for an equaliser. Oldham praying that they don't give it all away right at the death. Halla gets there, but it's not really away. Jobson. And then Adams. And Richie here will look to use his experience to hold it up, but White's there in ahead of him. There's the clock ticking away inside the last minute. Come on, Borough, says this young fan. They've got to get on with it. Falconer. And remember, it's so tight at the bottom that if they did get an equaliser, who knows, it might be the point that keeps them in the Premier League. By the way, football coming up, Turkey and England in the World Cup live, 3 o'clock Wednesday week. And if you miss it then, highlights at 8 o'clock that evening. 3-2 to Oldham here, Wilkinson trying to flick it on, Jobson gets it away, Oldham can come to here, they'll want to keep possession, but they've given it away again. And there's a free kick given. there's a free kick to Oldham, Chris Kamara keep with that decision somehow.
Well, Oldham will take uh, as long as they can possibly get away with with this free kick. I've heard their manager down at the bottom of the Premier League. Kenny <laughs> Lawrence is right what he said about pressure being tough down here. Certainly harder at the bottom. Milligan. We are into injury time now. How much will referee Kelvin Morton add on here? He's taken the signal from his two linesmen that the time is up, the normal time. Oldham badly need to keep possession. Offside here, so this will give Middlesbrough a free kick. Well, they've got to just take Derek White and Nicky Moore now. Just get up there, get in the box. Now, uh, Richie's going to get booked there. The whistle had gone long before, and he kicked the ball to the goalkeeper. Well, you can hear Andy Richie there tweeting his eyes and saying he didn't hear. And I think, to be fair to Andy, I don't think he did hear it, but the referee's been blown it. It's a little bit unfortunate. But everyone's up. Just look at the edge of that penalty area. <laughs> I think the ref was exasperated because he'd been trying to get the ball back for about 20 seconds before that. Phillips, maybe the last chance for Middlesbrough. Jobson gets there, they've got it away. And there goes the final whistle. Oldham Athletic have won this relegation dogfight. And they've got the three points, only their second away win. Andy Ritchie getting the third and what proved to be decisive goal. But what a nail-biting finish it was. And the small band of Oldham fans who've taken the trouble will be very pleased that they did so. It really was a tense, tense finish. Oldham looked in control at 2-0. Craig Hignett there, whose goal made it 3-2 to set up that very tense final couple of minutes. Paul Gerrard, a bit of a hero for Oldham Athletic. And how does that leave things? Oldham are out of the bottom three for the first time since mid-January. Forrester bottom, Middlesbrough second to bottom, Sheffield United back down in the bottom three, though Sheffield United play at Coventry on Wednesday. Forest go to Southampton. The plot thickening all the time. Disappointment for the Middlesbrough fans, elation for those Oldham fans, but the battle is not over yet. Oldham with five home games, Wimbledon, Sheffield United, Southampton, Sheffield Wednesday and Liverpool to play and three away, Liverpool, Spurs and Villa. Five at home, three away, that's not a bad run in at all for Oldham Athletic. So let's uh, go downstairs and meet some of the uh, protagonists there with Nick Collins. Ian, thanks very much. Let's uh, start with Andy Ritchie, the man whose goal in the end proved decisive. Your first of the season too. Yeah, just, just about, yeah. We made it hard for ourselves, didn't we? We let them back into it twice. And really we shouldn't have done, but uh, it worked out in the end, we've got the three points, that's what we need, it's really six, isn't it, really? Let's also bring Craig Hignett in, because you then made it very close indeed with uh, that final goal. But uh, how much of a disappointment is it to lose a game like this? Oh, obviously, it's a big disappointment, you know, both teams in the bottom half, and we knew this one was a six-pointer. And uh, the first half, we were very disappointed with it, really, and we let the game slip straight from the off. Well, I think we can show you that goal, uh, Craig, here it comes. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, it was a great ball in by Willie Faulkner, and uh, I found myself in between two people and just glanced it and for the best, and luckily enough it went in. Well, that brought the crowd to life again, but the goal that had really shut them up, of course, had come a few minutes earlier. Andy, yours, I think we can uh, take a look at that as well. Here we go. Yeah, we got offside a couple of times and just managed to, to break the offside trap here. And uh, I was in two minds a little bit, but he, he went down early and just managed to flick it over him. <coughs> yeah, it was very nice to see it go in. How much confidence does that give you to now go on and get out of the trouble that you're in? Well, I think we've played quite well for the last few games. You know, uh, we, were, we were unlucky at Norwich, apparently, and uh, we're doing quite well. The confidence has always been sky high. It's never really been down. There's a good set of lads and we've got good confidence between ourselves. So this could be uh, the platform to make a, 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 a assault up the league. Yeah? Well, we'll see. Just a very quick word with Ian Elney, who scored the second goal tonight. You're claiming it and you're absolutely convinced, are you? <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, just scrambled it over the line, but I'm definitely claiming that one. What uh, part of it did you manage to touch? Uh, well, I don't know. It's just part. basically... Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter as long as I just scrambled it over the line. That's all that counts. Gave Oldham a bit of breathing space as well, didn't it? Yeah, and we needed it in the second half. I think, you know, we didn't, need, we didn't turn them enough in the second half with the wind and they, uh, they came out as well and pinned us in. 
Well, it was a terrific match. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you, Nick. Well, the Oldham fans around us here are absolutely delighted with that. They're out of the bottom three for the first time since January. When we come back, we'll have words with Dave Bassett, the Sheffield United manager, see what he made of it. The big match verdict is next. Monday Night Football, let's check these match facts. Middlesbrough 2, Oldham 3. Middlesbrough, shots 17, only 4 on target. Oldham 9, 4 on target. And that, as Andy Gray was pointing out in the second half, is probably where the difference lay. Nine corners in total, 7 to Middlesbrough. Three kicks conceded, but 27 by Middlesbrough, 39 from Oldham. It was that desperate. Oldham got three vital points out of it. Dave Bassett. Sheffield United's manager is with us. That puts you back in the bottom three, of course, although you do have a game or two in hand, don't you? Yeah, we do. Uh, well, I think we have one game in hand one on, on Oldham. Oldham and two in Middlesbrough, so we've got our work cut out. But uh, if we lose the last couple of games like we have, then you have to expect to be in the relegation zone. But uh, all credit to Oldham tonight. They played well and uh, they kept their call. Really, they shot themselves the foot in the foot a little bit with the uh, first goal when they're trying to play offside at a free kick, and um, that lifted Middlesbrough for a few minutes. But, uh, Andy Ritchie would be delighted to get a chance like that to come back straight away. Well, just let's have a look at the goals. Adams got the owner in the first half. At the end of a good spell by Middlesbrough for this, yep. Oldham turned it round on them, didn't they? Well, Oldham had, uh, had got back in the game and playing quite well here. And uh, Olney does uh, quite well here. He takes it on his chest. He's looking as if he's going to cross it. He checks back on his right foot and uh, he's clipping it far post. and. Uh, Bernard's pulled off and has put a good, strong header away in the corner and gives the goalkeeper no chance there. So that was 1-0. Only as we heard, is claiming the second. I don't suppose it matters too much to anybody from Oldham who got it. It counted 2-0 at half-time as a result of this. That's right, the corner comes in and uh, Jobson gets up above, above Mohan, heads it down to six-yard box. Players haven't blocked it and Olney's uh, stayed in on the line and uh, his presence there has caused problems to the goalkeeper and the Middlesbrough defender. Now that was 2-0, it was beginning to look as though Middlesbrough were not going to get the break they needed. And then this from the free kick, as Oldham went out, Middlesbrough punished them. Down. That's right, well Oldham go out and Bernard stays in and uh, this leaves uh, the boy Mohem with a good chance and he puts it away well on the volley really. Didn't he take it well? Yeah, he does put it away well. As you can see they're going out and uh, it's, uh, that can, it's always a tricky thing to do. Teams do it and sometimes they get away with it and then sometimes you get punished. If you get punished it's all over really. Well, we thought we were in for a barnstorming finish there, but Oldham broke away again. And Andy Ritchie, as we've heard, hadn't been on the mark in a year or so. Mind you, he has been injured for a good deal of that. Made it through yeah, once. It's, it's, uh, yeah, the, the both centre-halves are really uh, whites out of position and Moan plays offside, uh, unnecessary, and uh, then Andy Ritchie's through. And the goalkeeper does go down a little bit early and makes his mind up, and uh, Ritchie's uh, more than happy with that, just clipping it over him. A technical finisher like Ritchie, is odds on, isn't he, when the keeper right. commits himself like that? That's right. Well, he hasn't scored for a while, and it's, it's happened. And the keeper, you can see, goes down, and he lifts it over him nicely. You know, it's meat and drink to a striker of his calibre. With the crowd streaming out, we weren't finished, because Middlesbrough managed to find another, although a little bit too late, as it turned out. That's right. The, the ball's getting forward here. Uh, Faulkner picks it up, and he he's, goes to cross it. He comes back on his favourite left foot. And he clips it in and uh, Hignitz just gets in behind uh, the boy Fleming and it's a good header. He glances it away and uh, the keeper's got no chance. I mean the keeper made a couple of good saves all night but he has no chance with this. He's in between the centre halves, a little nice uh, glancing header and a staunching and it's 3-2 but not really much time for Middlesbrough to save the game at that stage. Let's just have a look at the league table. Top to bottom, we know that Villa are top, Manchester United the second, Norwich a third, Sheffield Wednesday a fourth. Of course, it's down at the bottom that we're concentrating tonight. Now, I suppose we ought to leave a word here to Dave. What do we make of all that, Dave? Well, it's all very tight, really. It's still those same four clubs. Uh, there's that little bit of gap uh, with uh, Crystal, uh, Crystal Palace and uh, Everton and Leeds have just got those extra points and games. Uh, but it's up to us four, really, to try and catch them up. And at the moment, obviously, the bookies and everybody's going to say, well, it's between those four, and nobody would particularly argue. But uh, there's still a few games, there's a few bottle games to come, and uh, before you know it, a few teams can slip into it. But if I was a gambling man, I'd say it's us four unless we can pull Crystal Palace back into it. It's a rare old tussle. Let's hear what Lenny Lawrence and Joe Royal made of all this tonight. 
Well, Joe, first of all, congratulations, but you. Uh, you don't like uh, doing it the easy way, really, do you? Never have done. Never have done. I mean, you must uh, love us. Um, we're liable to score one or two, but there's always one or two at the other end. Uh, to be honest, I mean, Lenny might see it different. I thought we were quite comfortable when they scored the first goal. And then uh, one player sleeps in on a, a, a bit of a bit of an offside trap and uh, all of a sudden we're under the cosh again. And I thought, well, I've seen this film before, but uh, we got the third one and that was vital, really. Last five games, though, two wins, two draws and only one defeat. You show that form over the next five and, and you may have a, a fairly relaxed end of the season. Yeah, we might make Europe. Um, <laughs> it's, it's that close, but uh, we, we have had a good run. We've been a little bit more stable and sensible of late and that's something that we haven't always been. Lenny, if I could bring you in here, after losing this one, it was billed as the six-pointer beforehand. Can you still survive, do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a major blow for us losing, especially in the manner we lost, but uh, well done to Oldham for that. They, they did very well. Um, we're barely alive. We've, we know we've given a mountain to climb. Oldham, uh, whatever it is, one point in front of us, having played one game less. It's not all over yet. It'll be three from the bottom four, I think, unless Palace can be pulled back into it. But we'll have to improve prove defensively otherwise it'll be uh, academic as far as we're concerned where do you draw consolation after a result like this well we gave away two bad goals with uh, you know defensive lapses in the first half which is what we've been doing all the season is why we're down the bottom they showed spirit in the second half and pinned Oldham back without creating too many chances really then we got a goal and then the most important thing is then is to keep the pressure on and then we commit defensive suicide in the most in the worst piece of nonsense you ever wish to see then it's 3-1 and the pressure's off them and ironically we get the second goal back now, had it been 2-1, of course, that might have got us a point. But there we are. Oldham did it. They played well on the break and they battled well. Was it all down to confidence, do you think, the fact that you managed to pull off another good result tonight? I think we've been gaining confidence. We got a, a slightly fortunate draw at Goodison a few weeks ago. And um, having been 2-0 down with 10 minutes to go, we were back in and we got a point. And then we beat United and we, we've drawn a lot from that. And even though we lost at Norwich um, to an own goal in, in this little run, you know, we generally have been looking tighter of late and uh, I'm almost scared to say that with us, but uh, as long as we keep taking the tablets, we've got a chance. We've got five games at home and three away left now. Do you think Lenny Lawrence's Middlesbrough can survive as well? Of course it can. We can all survive. I mean, and you've seen it change so quickly before. At this stage last year, everybody was saying that Southampton were down and I think they've finished about 10th from bottom. So that there's a long way to go yet. It'll change uh, several times, I'm sure. Lenny, how do you think the last few weeks of the season will pan out? I think it's going to be tight between the bottom four. Nobody, apart from Oldham to some extent, are showing uh, enough form to, to rapidly climb the table. Oldham are showing the best form out of the teams in the bottom four. Um, we've got to pick ourselves up. We haven't got a game until Saturday week now. and Just bat on and, and do the best you can. You never give up until, until it's statistically impossible. Obviously, we've got to stop letting goals in, but we just keep doing our best and, and, and go to the end. Well, we wish you both luck. Lenny, Joe, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Nice men, brave men. It seems the fellows at the bottom will come out and talk to you no matter what. Middlesbrough 2, Oldham Athletic 3. We've heard from the managers. Next, we'll be hearing from the fans. Welcome back. A real six-pointer, this Oldham won it. This is what they're saying outside, starting with the Oldham fans. So we were quite impressed with it. We went out, we defended uh, our lead from the start. Obviously, the last seven minutes, you know, three goals scored. Uh, obviously, for you at Sky, it was going to be a good one, but uh, we're happy with the results in the end. We defended well. I'm extremely happy. I've had two quid on them at 33 to 1 to win 3 2, so extremely happy. And it takes us out of the bottom three. Do you think they can now avoid relegation? I uh, hope so. There's still a long way to go, really. Some difficult matches, but. I'm sure that's going to do the confidence of the world of good. Well, I mean, we tried our best at the end, but we couldn't get back. I mean, we had all the ball in the second half, just couldn't make an incisive run like and score, so... We've just got to wait for next season, haven't we, and hope that we can uh, pull out. I mean, it's all against the odds, but we might get through. If not, let's win the championship next season for the first division. How bad the result is that for Middlesbrough? It's not a very good result, considering all of them are underneath them, I were under them, but uh, we've just got to try harder and see if we can get back up again. 